Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to talk about the Cout object and how you can use it to display output to the screen in C++. In addition, we're going to talk about a new operator called the Stream Insertion Operator, which we'll need to use with our Cout object, as well as the escape sequences that you can use to modify the appearance of your output. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I've already got a Visual Studio project set up and ready to go. To start with, we're going to need a preprocessor directive, and we're going to use pound include iostream, and this is going to give us access to cout and a manipulator called endl, or end line for short. So note that the last character here is a lowercase L. It's not a one. A lot of times students will confuse the two. And what ENDL allows us to do is move the cursor to the next line, which you'll see here in a second. Now we're also going to need to include the line using namespace STD. And so once we've done that, we're almost ready to go. But let's take a look at an example here. So let's say that I want to display the word one on the screen. So what I would need to do is I would need to type out C out. And then I would need to use this thing called the stream insertion operator. And it looks like a couple of angle brackets pointing at C out. And so after that operator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type the string literal, something inside of double quotes that I want to put on the screen. So in this case, I wanted to put one. We'll put our semicolon at the end of the statement, which indicates to C++ that we're done here. This is our complete statement. Remember this thing right here, the two angle brackets, this is the stream insertion operator. So what we're basically doing is we're taking this string right here, and we're sending it into C out. So now if I compile and run my program, you're gonna see nothing. Now why? Because I have Visual Studio set up to compile, run the program instantly, and then as soon as it runs a program, it just closes the output window. Now by default, Visual Studio doesn't do that. I have it set up to do that, so that way there isn't a bunch of extra junk that gets printed out at the end. And so what we're gonna do here to make sure we can see the output is we're gonna put a little pause in here. So we're gonna type cn.ignore, and we're gonna type cn get. Okay, now once we do that, pile and run it, then we'll be able to see our output. It'll keep that output screen open for us, okay? So that is how you can display a simple string on the screen. Now, if I wanted to do something a little bit more interesting, then I might want to, you know, make a longer string. Okay, fine. You know, I can do something like this. Let's see how one, two, three. You're going to see everything on the screen as I typed it in the code, but there isn't correlation here between the code and what you see on the screen. For example, I can also do something like this. Looking at it, you might suspect or you might guess that, oh, well, one and two is going to be on the first line of the output and then the three is going to be on the second line of the output. But that's not how this works. Okay, you're going to see that everything is still on the same line. That is because on line seven, see out prints out the contents of your string, one, two, exclamation points, right? And then it leaves the cursor after that exclamation point. So for example, if I was to take this out, you know, you'll see what I mean. Okay, let's go ahead and compile and run it. You'll see in the output, see where the cursor is? It's right there after the exclamation point. So the next see out statement, you know, picks right up from there. So that T for the three is going to go right at where the cursor was. And so you can see now, you know, there's the one, two, and the three, and then the cursor is sitting there after the exclamation point for the three. Now, if I wanted to set it on separate lines, then that's where the ENDL comes in. So what I'll do is I'll add a second stream insertion operator and then the ENDL. So I've got my string going to C out and I've got the special instruction, the ENDL going to C out, which tells C out move the cursor to the beginning of the next line. And so then on uh, line eight, my second statement executes and then it, the three gets printed out from there. So when we compile and run this, you're going to see that that is in fact what happens. Now we actually have things on separate lines. Okay. But I don't have to do this in two separate statements. I could make this in this fashion or this way. I could do something like this. Okay. You can build your C out statements in all kinds of different ways. So we get the same output, even though we wrote the code in a separate way. Now what happened here? Let's understand. Okay. I'm sending a bunch of stuff to C out. I'm building this long old statement that's telling C out to do three different things. What am I telling it to do? 
I'm telling it print out these characters right here. And then I'm telling it to move the cursor to the next line. And then I'm telling it to print out these characters here, right? And I can make this, again, I can write my CL statements as simply or as complex as I want to. So I could even do something like this. Break up every single string into different pieces, right? So I've got one string that is one. I got two. I got instruction error to move the cursor to the next line. And then I've got that three string there. You can do this in all kinds of different combinations. And what you want to do is you want to play with it. You want to experiment. You want to do trial and error. You want to see what makes what happen. And I can even, you know, I can move this ENDL to the very end of the line because let's say that I wanted to, you know, have two completely separate lines and I wanted the one, the two, and the three all on one line. And let's say then on the next line, I wanted to do four, five, and say six. Okay, well, I can do that. I can make it as simple or as complex as I want it to be. Now, what if I wanted to put a space in between the one, the two, the three, the four, the five, and the six? Well, then I'm going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and put my cursor here in my code, and then I'm going to hit the space bar. And so that's a space. A space is a character just as much as the N is a character, the E is a character. So I want a space after that exclamation point. 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 And so when I do that, it's going to put that space in there. Okay, so there's nothing, there's nothing tricky about that. You know, sometimes, you know, I'll have an assignment or something, or maybe a, a question on a test where I say, hey, print out this pattern. You know, print out something that looks like this, you know, and uh, students will get confused. They'll be like, well, I don't know how to do graphics. I'm like, what graphics? There's no graphics here. It's just uh, an asterisk is a character just like anything else. Right, so let's just use a couple spaces, a star, ENDL, right? Let's do, you know, another space, three stars, ENDL, and then let's do, uh, you know, five stars, ENDL. That's it, because I'm just using spaces, and then I'm just moving the cursor to the next line, because a space is a character just like anything else. So now you can see I got my pattern. When you get a little assignments like that or test questions like that, you know, don't overthink these things. You know, it's not a trick really. I mean, as long as you understand what you're doing, it's not, there's nothing, there's nothing really fancy to it. Okay. Uh, all right. So that's the basics of how you can use C out in the stream insertion operator. Now, the other thing we have to talk about are these things called escape sequences. So I'm going to show you a few of those. And these are just special characters that you can use to do certain things with C out. So the first one we'll look at is we'll look at backslash in and backslash in is the um, new line escape sequence so all this does is it tells c out to move the cursor to the next line it's almost i mean for our purposes they're not exactly the same there's not they're not exactly synonyms for each other but this is an alternative for now to endl okay and these escape sequences must go inside double quotes rather than having endl here Instead, what I could do, this is an alternative, I could do backslash n. So C out's going to print out the one, space, and then it's going to print out the two, space, it's going to print out the three. And then when it sees this backslash n, it's going to say, oh, okay, you want me to move the cursor to the next line. And so that's going to move the cursor to the next line. And then it's going to do something similar for statement 10. Okay, so it's kind of like an alternative. And I should also point out too, that the ENDL does not go inside of double quotes. You'll see students do that sometimes. They'll be like, oh, well, ENDL. That means I have to go to the next line. No, anything in between the double quotes, that's what gets printed out by C out, including the characters ENDL, right? So you see that right there? So don't put ENDL, don't do that. Don't put ENDL inside of double quotes. So backslash N, new line escape sequence. So the next thing we'll look at is going to be backslash T, which is horizontal Okay, what this does is this moves the cursor forward a preset number of spaces. So there's these things called tab stops in your output that C++ knows about. And if you do the backslash T, it just moves the cursor to that next preset location. I think it's every eight characters or so. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So let's say that I put a backslash T here and then I put a backslash T here. So see how it's going to print out the one exclamation point and that's going to see this and it's going to say, oh, 
Okay, let's uh, go ahead and move that cursor to the next preset position and then pick up from there. Then it'll print out the two exclamation point. Then Seattle will see the backslash T and it'll say, okay, let's move that cursor to the next preset position. It's just implicit. The preset position is just known by C++ where those positions are. There's nothing extra you need to do to set those up. It's just, it's just a thing that's built in. So you see how there's that space now because C out printed out the one exclamation point and then it saw the backslash T and then went forward to that preset position and then printed out the next string two exclamation point and then it saw the backslash T and then moved to the next preset position and then printed out the three. So that's how the horizontal tab works. Those preset positions are known as tab stops. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna show you is the backspace. And what the backspace does is it just moves the cursor back one position. So let's do something like this. Let's see what that looks like. So let's say we do C out and we have one and then I do backslash B. So what's gonna end up happening is, is that C out is going to print out all those characters. And normally the cursor would be positioned after the exclamation point. Well, because of this escape sequence, the cursor is gonna go back one spot without deleting the exclamation point. So you're gonna see that cursor blinking underneath the exclamation point see that okay and you can do as many backslash b's as you want and as a matter of fact you can put any escape sequence in its own little mini stream right so i could do something like that and maybe i want to move the cursor back two positions so that way it's sitting underneath the e instead well okay i'll just do backslash b backslash b or maybe i will do it all in one string instead of doing, or all in one statement instead of doing it in two statements. Okay, fine. You can do that too. You can do this in all kinds of different combinations. Like I said, experiment, trial and error, see how it works. But again, see how the cursor is underneath the E? Beautiful. You know, you might be thinking, well, what's the point of that? Well, once the cursor is underneath the E there, what if I want to replace the E? Maybe I wanted to make it uppercase. Well, now I'm going to. The uh, one exclamation point is going to get printed out. The cursor would be sitting after the exclamation point. We got two back spaces that's going to happen. That's going to move the cursor back underneath the lowercase e. And then my C out with the uppercase e is going to happen. And that's going to overwrite that lowercase e. And then the cursor is going to be sitting underneath the exclamation point. Okay, so you can see that happened. So this is kind of a way that you could kind of think of, you know, maybe editing your output, you know, maybe think about writing a program that allows you to edit, you know, stuff or change, you know, what you were writing. Okay. So that's what backspace does. You also have return. And so re return does, it's similar to backspace, except for it'll move the cursor all the way back to the beginning of the same line. So you're going to see that the cursor is flashing underneath the O after that backslash R. You know, then you can, you know, do additional Cout statements or whatever you want to do, similar to maybe similar to what we did with the backspace. Now, what if you wanted to to display an actual backslash in your code? Let's say that I wanted to display in the output O backslash N E. Okay, well, it should be easy, right? Just type the backslash in there and um, it's going to work just fine, right? Wrong. You know, why wrong? Because backslash N is the new line escape sequence, right? So C out, saw the O, printed it, saw the backslash N and said, oh, we'll move the cursor to the next line. And then at the beginning of the next line. And so then it printed out the E and the exclamation point. So you can see that that's exactly what happened. But if I wanted to print out an actual backslash in the middle of my string there, then what I have to do is I have to escape my escape, right? So this character is oftentimes referred to as the escape or the escape character. So I'm going to do the backslash escape sequence, backslash. And so by putting two of them in here, C out, we'll see this first character. And this is kind of how C out works, right? It sees the first escape character and it says, oh, well, okay, the next character is going to have a special meaning. And so then it looks at that one and goes, oh, well, that means you just want to actually see a backslash. You want me to actually print out a backslash. And so then when we build this, you're going to see there it is. Okay. So the next one we will look at, the next escape sequence, is going to be the double quote. And so it looks something like that. And that is going to allow us to print out a double quote in the middle of our string. 
All right. So, you know, without that, you might try to do something like this and say, oh, well, I want to print out, oh, double quote, N, E, exclamation point. Well, I can't do that, right? Because take a look at the um, underline there. There's a little squiggle. It's because we have um, mixed matched double quotes. Okay. So a string is anything in between a pair of double quotes. So this is a string, right? But since I only have one other quote over here, it's mismatched. There's no, there's no pair. It's invalid syntax. So that's not going to work. So instead, what we need to do is we need to escape it. And if we escape it, then we're okay. See how it looks at the escape character and then says, oh, next character has a special meaning. What's the next character? Double quote. Oh, that means that you want me to actually print out a double quote on the screen. Totally fine. And the last one we'll look at is the single quote. Works same way as double quote. It's just with a single quote instead. That will show you a single quote inside of our string. Now you might look at that, you might play around with that and discover that, hey, if I don't put in that uh, escape character, that it's going to work just fine anyway. And that's true, okay? Because so long as you put a single quote inside of double quotes, then C++ understands and knows what to do with it. Matter of fact, I could put as many of these in here as I want because they get treated just like any other character, whether it would be an A, a question mark, a C, whatever. Where this becomes a problem is when instead of trying to send C out a string, you try to send it a character. Let, let us say that I wanted to send the character uppercase A. So this is not a string anymore. This is the character literal A. So that's a single character that I'm sending. Okay, not a whole string of characters. I can't do something like this because you can only fit a single character inside of single quotes. So I get this garbage here, right? So if I wanted to do a single quote, treat a quote as a character, well, then I've got the squiggle again. I got problems again because quotes have to be in pairs, whether they're single quotes or double quotes. So you can't do that. But if I include the escape character first, remember how CL works with that. It sees this and goes, oh, well, the next character has a special meaning. In this case, single quote says, all right, I'm going to go ahead and print out that single quote for you. All right. So that works just fine. Okay. So now you know the basics of using CL to display strings onto the screen. You also understand how to use escape sequences with C out. Thanks for watching.